Look at your your outcomes for because you know Sakwa and all these people in, in in government they want to know what are the outcomes and I'll go through the outcomes quickly with you if you go to your page here um, where it says specific outcomes page six where's yours did you register yeah you did register. <laughs> The foundation of your church, we discussed that. We have a foundation course, for those of you who don't know. We also have the foundation course in different languages. We also have the foundation course in Klasa. It's just a play on words. Um, but the foundations of your church, we sometimes inspect foundations. I'm on page 6, where it says unit standard. Uh, I mean a different manual. Ah, oh, okay. You got the updated manual. You got the updated manual. Thanks, Carl. What page is it? It doesn't have a page. Oh, it's still in the beginning. You're not on a page yet. Oh my gosh, this is the updated one. Okay, sorry, I've updated the manual for this weekend. All right. So there where it says unit standard church leader toolkit. You see it there? It's in the beginning of your your manuals. After the contents page. The contents. Yes. You got it? Okay, sorry about that. I've got the old version. You've got the new version. You've been updated. So, I was going <coughs> to explain to you the benefits of orbital networking, but you understand now, right? That one system can relate to another system. We have networks networking with networks. Because we're not competing to see who builds the biggest pyramids. It's easy to relate to other networks, draw from them, invest into them, because we're circling on Christ. It's not about us. So what we're seeing is the Lord is allowing people to affiliate together, maintain their identities and autonomy, and still relate together for a bigger vision. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So instead of a denomination... We're a confederation of churches and networks. Networking with networks. This is scalable. This is sustainable. We are able um, to grow exponentially as a move of God. In the, during COVID, this move of God that you are now a part of, or some of you thinking about working with us, has grown, has trebled in, in the last two years. Three times. Because we are busy sending out apostles, we talk, we get to know each other. They say, you know what, it would be great if we can do something together. Focused on Christ for our nation, for our region. <clears throat> so, there's a, there's a whole list of benefits there for networking together from page 12 onwards. If you just go to page 12, <coughs> I'm going to show you how to use the material that you have in front of you. You know when the disciples had the great catch of fish? And Jesus says, cast your nets on the other side. They had too many fish. And they signaled to the partners and said, come and help us. This is us signaling to partners. The work is great. There's too much need. There's too much opportunity. We need more equipped leaders to follow through with the work that we do. 
And it needs to happen fast. Amen. God's doing things on an on a exponential level in the kingdom of God. Why? Because we're preparing for Jesus' return. Why? Because people need more training. They need to see Christ formed in the, in the, in the churches. <clears throat> but when it comes to working together, affiliation allows you to keep your identity. Like we found that it costs too much money to change everybody's name in Africa. When they hear I'm from South Africa, they charge me double. Like with $500 to register your church, the year we're from South Africa, one five. Why? I don't know. So I said to people, why don't we just affiliate your part of Harvest International Ministry somewhere on your document or on your banner so people know there's a bigger move that you're a part of and this is how I've made friends. Now, it makes it easier. It, we save money. We don't have to go through all the legal procedures again but we relate and we agree on our tenets of faith. Not tenets of faith, tenets. Not tenants. <laughs> so, the orbital networking mandate that I have there is something God gave me. And since we've started thinking like this, we've seen tremendous interest in the world. From Bangladesh to Philippines, through to Europe, we're starting to look at South America now. Amen? And uh, it's because we're not trying to take over your church. I really have too much work to do. If you look at us, we don't micromanage churches. We want to empower, equip, and release people. It's not us. But there are things we agree upon. And the unity of faith is number one. Do we agree on the basics of the Bible? I've written it out here for you. <coughs> if you go to the foundations, um, yeah, where's the foundations of a church? Um, I'm skipping through some pages. Please read through this in your own time. Okay, like today I said, we're not going to cover everything. But I'm going to give you some keys to unlock and open up things for yourself. The foundations of a church there on page 24. Apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. You need to have some sort of apostolic and prophetic input in your church for it to be built on a chief cornerstone of Christ. Apostolic doctrine and perspective. You need to know what the new covenant is and how to avoid preaching condemnation but to preach righteousness. You need to understand what the apostolic doctrine for the church today is. What is the present truth for the church and what Jesus is doing in his church today? Because we are a network, we have many apostles and prophets that you can draw from. Some of them are sitting here, some of them you still have to meet. Amen? Good, strong men of God, with character, with track record, with fruit in their ministries that you can trust. And sometimes you need that. <coughs> before, you buy, before you buy chairs, before you get a, a building... You need to make sure there's apostolic prophetic foundations. And the prophetic, what prophets do is they understand the heart of God for that time. They understand the heart of Jesus for his church. David was a man after God's heart. He was a prophet. And he wanted to do all God's will. A prophet will point out things that need to change. The things we need to reform. Uh, traditions of men that we need to do away with. The prophets will point it out. And you need to let them do it. Because then you can build your church on Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Foundations. Um, there's a lot there about church planting, uh, foundation course, outcomes. <coughs> the creed of our faith was something my dad wrote when he came from Bible school. He studied the Bible um, in Miracle Valley, Arizona. Evangelist A. Allen had a wonderful ministry of miracles. He started a Bible school. We got a lot of their material very good Jesus-centered Bible school material. Our main subject is the life of Christ. We study the life of Christ with the harmony of the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And we look at all the journeys of Jesus through his life all the way through to, to the cross and his resurrection. Very few churches study the life of Christ. They, they don't see the whole picture of his life and how his life goes out from the time he was on earth, 
His life is multiplied in His disciples in the book of Acts. Seen through the church with the Holy Spirit representing Him. And then how the epistles of the New Testament shows you how the body of Christ communicates, works together, fulfills the great commission of Jesus. How His life continues in the churches and in the history of the new churches. All the way through to Revelation where John talks about the seven churches of Asia. You can see how Jesus' life has continued in the church. So the whole new covenant is about Jesus and how he builds his church. And remember, everything we're busy with is about a wedding. This is probably a wedding venue. It's a very suitable venue because we are preparing the bride for the bridegroom. Your church, my church, doesn't matter what the name of the church is one day. Jesus is coming for one bride. How are we going to do that? <laughs> Amen. Are we going to get past some of our problems and our differences? And it's okay. The bride is ready, Jesus. You can come now. <laughs> Amen. So there's the creed of our faith. We practice doing what He tells us in His Word. We focus on the kingdom. I'm just summarizing. We reign with Christ. You know, there's, there's a, a summary. And then the, the next page in uh, 26, <clears throat> there's a statement of faith. Seven tenets of our faith that we agreed on at a summit in 2002. We had an international summit where apostles and prophets from around the world said, what do we believe? How can we summarize what we believe? And I want to just tell that to you quickly because you need to know what we believe. The statement of the faith is the same as most of you. I know that there were some problems with the Trinity. But you know that, that it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But they're also one. I don't think there's a problem with that here, is there? When I say Trinity, uh, my, my, my friend here was telling me, it's a problem for some churches, you know. On how many times do you baptize somebody? And do you say, in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I said, you know what? Just make sure that that old nature is buried with Christ through baptism. Kill that old nature in the water and bring it up in newness of life. That's what happens. And when we baptize people, we see them filled in the Holy Spirit like Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, go baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the one disciple was baptized in John and Paul says, but do you know Jesus' baptism? Yes. Are you with me? Yeah. Are these problems in churches? How will people get baptized? Uh, you don't bury, bury someone three times. You put him, in the, put him in the ground and you take him out. Then you put him in the ground and you cry again and then you take him out again. <laughs> Please just bury a dead body once. I like those African guys that dance with the coffin. They've got the dark glasses. And they dance with the coffin. You see them. They pay them to dance with the coffin. Yeah. Oh, pick him up again. Yeah, pick him up. Pick him up. But if you, if you focus on the statement of faith there quickly on page 26. <coughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ. The incarnation we believe Jesus came in the flesh. You know he was a man but he was still God. There are problems about that. If you have questions about what we believe. You can email me. You can speak to the apostles and prophets here. The leaders here. <coughs> Please talk to us about the faith issues that you might have. And let's work it out together. Because I'm looking at unity of faith here. We might have different purposes, but there, there must be a unity of faith for us to walk together. We must agree on some things. There's the inspiration of scriptures, the Godhead, repentance and regeneration, water baptism, not the baptism of infants, you know, because they have no say in it. There's no faith connected to it. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking with tongues, as the Spirit gives utterance. We want the Pentecostal experience. <coughs> the Lord's Supper communion. Divine healing. Holy living. Deliverance. Gifts of the Spirit. Fivefold ministry gifts. This is just a summary for you. Tithing. Set forth in the Old and New Testament. I'll explain that when it talks about finances. Amoresca Success Media Solution Group is a production house that offers a variety of contents. 
photography, photo shoots indoor, in studio and outdoor, TV, film, live streaming, workshops, drone services for area views, live recording, multicam production and also directing. We offer 4K on high definition quality, both in video and picture. Catch number on my hand. Hope to hear from you soon. We build memories that last locally and internationally.